Howdy guys. Okay, so let's finish up this section by splitting the terrain up into a bunch of little tiny tiles. Now this is a good thing to do, especially when you start utilizing things like occlusion coin. This way we're not having to draw the entire terrain um, if we're not looking at it. Alright, so by splitting it up into tiles, we basically get the ability to hide those tiles and, you know, save us a little bit of performance. Okay, so let's take a look at how that is done inside of Houdini. Alright, so we have our HDA processor right here that's doing the terrain texturing. Well, what we want to do is run it through another HDA processor here. All right, and this one is going to be responsible for splitting terrain. Or we could call it split terrain. How about that? Cool. So what we need is another SOP level HDA that we can pass the texture terrain into so we can split it up into a bunch of little tiny tiles. Okay, so let's get that underway. Let's go into our SOP HDA's geometry node here. And again, what I'm going to do is copy the input, all right, and make sure that we are on our final work item there, okay? So we're going to jump back up into our SOP HDAs, and let's drop down a split, our height field tile split, all right? Now this particular node is pretty cool because what we can do is we can split it up into a bunch of individual tiles right so you can see now we have these individual tiles right here and we have we can control the amount of tiles if we just copy this parameter and paste that in for this side over here so paste relative and if i change this to two we get a bigger tile and if i change the tile number we can go through all the different tiles here all right so i think i'm going to leave it at four for right now all right this will give us a bunch of little tiny tiles just to kind of drive the the concept home all right, so we're going to get a bunch of these tiles now. All right, so uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to now wrap that up into an HDA. So this this one's pretty simple. All right, so I'm going to call this uh, IP Split Terrain. And right-click on it say Create Digital Asset. And we will then go and do our usual process here for HDA. And I'm going to make sure I save it into my actual Houdini project here. Cool. Say accept. And there we go. All right. So a couple things we want to promote. So I want to promote the tile count. That will allow us to control how many tiles we get. And we also want to promote the tile number. Because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get the current work item that we're working on. And pass that into the split uh, terrain node. All right. And that will basically control which tile tops is working on at the moment okay so with those two pieces of information let's hit uh, apply and accept all right and we can put a null node in here as well just to be consistent so we're going to say out split terrain like so and there we go so let's save it and let's jump into our top network over here and let's assign the hda file so now i want to assign the split terrain and we want to make sure that we're using the pdg dir all right so our working directory cool and all right so let's go into our hda parameters here and we have a tile count of four all right so that's our complete tile count right there and we also have a tile number, so this will allow us to basically roll through each one of these. So in order for this to work inside of a top network, we actually need to change this dynamically as we work on each item in here. Okay. So in order to do that, what I'm going to use is a new attribute called PDG underscore index. And that's the current work item index that we're working on. So these, these HDA processors can work on a lot of little tiny different work items and that will indicate the index all right so it'll start at zero so currently this would be zero if we had four in here it'd be zero one two three four so on and so forth okay so we want to keep that in there like that all right and what i want to do is i want to then promote my tile count so i'm going to come up here go to type properties let's fold all these guys up here since we're done with those and let's drag and drop in a new folder and we're going to call this uh split we're splitting how about that there we go and we'll make it collapsible and i'll jump back inside and what i'm going to do is promote 
our tile count. Very cool. All right, and our default will be four. That's fine. That's fine. We'll hit apply. And the reason why I want to do this is because now I want to go up to the top of my HDA here, go into that, go into that splitting folder there, and I want to copy this parameter. All right. So we're going to jump back in right here. And for the iterations, what I want to have happen is I want this to generate the amount of tiles that we need to split this up. If I know that my tile count in X, all right, is going to be four, then what we need to do is we need to multiply that. So four times four will end up with 16. All right. So what I'm going to do is just say paste relative reference. We'll do that one more time. So paste relative reference times that same value. So we'll get 16. Boom. And what will happen is this iteration value then will then feed in to this PDG index, which will then change tile number dynamically for us as we roll through this. Okay. So let's hit apply and accept, and let's go and cook the selected node. And I also need to make sure that I turn on my create file SOP inputs because we created this as a SOP level HDA. And that also reminds me that I need to remove my output. Apply and accept and then save. Very good. All right. So let's go back into our top network here and let's go and cook the selected node. And voila, look at that. We get 16 work items here. This is each and every individual tile. All right. And so what this is doing currently is it's rolling through every tile and it's splitting out the terrain for us, but it's retaining all the texturing information, all of our erosion, all that stuff. So another technique to make your terrains a little bit more efficient, especially if you want you know, to take advantage of things like occlusion culling. The cool part about all this too is that they're all Unity terrains, right? So we're taking advantage of the progressive meshing and we're also taking advantage of, you know, occlusion calling by tiling all this stuff. Cool. So there we go. We cooked all 16 tiles. All right. So now we have a tile per index. And you can see it didn't actually update. And that's because I made a mistake over here. All right. So in the HDA parameters, uh, we need to remove the back ticks here because uh, this is a number, not a string. Okay. And so with that, we're all good to go now. So what I'm going to do is just uh, cook the selected node again, and we're going to dirty and cook the selected node. All right. So we're going to roll through all of our terrain tiles again, and this time we're going to get every single tile. All right, so let's test this out. So there we go. So now we have every single tile all split out. Beautiful. Okay, so with that, let's go and save our top network here. Okay, and let's roll back over to Unity and let's copy over our new version of our HDA. So I'm going to copy it and paste it. Okay, and then we're going to come here into the level creation, say rebuild asset. There we go. Let's make sure we have all of our property set looks good we're going to do four tiles everything looks good so let's go back to our pdg asset link and this time let's go and select the split terrain all right so let's cook this node now all right so we're going to roll through this and you can see that we are waiting for 16 work items this means that we are successful in setting up our top network so it's going to roll through and cook all of these particular tiles and I totally forgot to auto load the results here so we'll see if that works on the fly while it's cooking all right and it, everything worked okay so we got all of our tiles but it left the original texture terrain output and that's just because I need to dirty that node and then that's dirty the split terrain and we will cook this node all right so now it's going to roll through all the tiles again and basically get them rolling so it's going to load these things as they get finished which is kind of fun to watch. All right, so I'll leave it actually playing this time so you guys can see them just pop into place. And it's so cool that you can still navigate, you know, it doesn't you know, completely bring Unity to its knees. Very cool. All right, so 
hopefully you guys can start to see the power of this whole procedural system process of developing these procedural systems. I really dig it. It's, it's really fun. Um, I could see it saving me tons and tons of time. And um, I'm already starting to rebuild how I do a lot of my Houdini engine stuff. All right, so there we go. We have a bunch of terrain tiles now. Perfect. Super awesome. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys there in this particular lecture. Let's close out the section by quickly doing a recap of all the things that we learned throughout the section. Thanks so much. Thank you.